I don't normally do unboxing videos, but seeing as this is still in its box, I suppose I'm going to have to. Welcome back to the Frontington and Backwards Railway. I've just bought this new locomotive for my railway. It's a Backman 2251 class Collet Goods 060 tender engine in GWR green livery. It's second hand and I'm struggling to get into the packaging at the moment. Well, there's the box. Here we go, here's what I wanted to see. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? This should look right at home on my branch line layout. Now, as you can tell by the polystyrene packaging, this isn't a modern model. It was probably released at least a couple of decades ago, and the box doesn't even say it's DCC ready. Let's look at that tender first. It looks like the previous owner has already made some modifications to this. That's, that's real coal added there. Otherwise, it looks in good condition. Uh, oh, it's missing a buffer. Well, that's a shame. Hmm, that'll be difficult to replace. I mean, it, it might even be easier just to buy a whole new tender. Right, let's move on to the engine. Beautiful. Oh, oh, I wasn't expecting that. It seems the previous owner has also detailed the cab for me. Nice. I can't see any other modifications though. And it, it looks in good condition, on the outside at least. Very smart indeed. These locomotives were quite common on branch lines, thanks to their light axle weight, making them suitable for pretty much all stretches of track on the Great Western Network. They were originally intended for goods work, but you'd also see them pulling passenger trains too. They were sometimes referred to as baby castles, thanks to their similarity with the, uh, the much larger castle class. But this isn't going to run on my layout until it's got a DCC chip in it. So I bought one of these. It's a Trainomatic Locomander 2 Mini with a 6-pin plug. But since this loco isn't DCC ready, it's not going to have a socket, so I'll be chopping that plug off. I've heard good things about these decoders, and it wasn't too expensive either. Direct from Tramfabrique. I'm not sponsored or anything, but there is a link in the description if you want to check them out. Ooh, look what I've just found in the box. It's that missing buffer. <laughs> well, that's good. I'll be able to glue that back on. I'll just pop that safely over. Ah, I dropped it. Ah, yeah, bear with. Hang on. Oh, wait, where's that gone? Ah, where's it gone? Okay, got it. Phew. Right, let's see about getting the body off this loco so we can see what we're dealing with. Now there are two screws I need to undo, one at either end. I can see one in the middle too, but I, I think that might be for something else. And there we go, that's what the inside looks like. And what I can immediately see as a potential problem here is that there is absolutely no room in here to swing a cat, let alone install a DCC chip. I mean, there's, there's enough space for the motor and that's it. Backman did produce a DCC ready version of this model where they had cut down the weight in the boiler to make space for a chip. 
But on this one, the boiler is just completely filled with the weight, and I don't have any tools to grind that down myself. Well, let's move on to the tender then. It may be that I can install the chip there instead. It looks like there's two screws to get into this as well. Yes, loads of room in there. I'll just need to get a bit creative to get the wiring from one half of the lo loco to the other. At this point I stopped filming because I was stepping into completely unknown territory, so I just took photos as I made progress. So let's draw the curtains, pull up an easy chair, and we'll have a good old fashioned slideshow. Removing that centre screw allowed me to remove the keeper plate on the bottom of the loco. Here's a close up showing the pickups, and the red and black wires soldered to the end. Oh, hang on, uh, let me just turn that around. There we go. Uh, those wires go up through this convenient little hole in the chassis, and are soldered directly onto the motor. So my next step will be to unsolder those wires from the motor. That allowed me to properly separate the keeper plate from the chassis. And offering up the DCC chip, it looks like the wires supplied might just be the right length to solder directly to the motor and have enough slack for the chip to be in the tender without needing to add any further wires. And that's good, because it, it'll keep it all tidy. Whoops, how'd that get in there? I need to connect the DCC chip to the pickups though, and since there isn't a convenient way to route those, I had to drill a couple of holes in the back of the keeper plate, either side of the drawbar. This is permanent, I, I can't undo this, so there's no going back now. Here's the first bit of soldering, connecting the red and black wires to the pickups. And then the orange and grey wires can go through those holes too, ready to connect to the motor. They can be fed through that hole in the chassis, like the original wires. And here they are, soldered to the motor. Here's what it looks like with the keeper plate back in place under the chassis. Pretty tidy so far. But it was at this moment that I'd realised I'd forgotten all about the tender. Those wires need to be fed through from the tender first. So I had to unsolder it all and start again. But at least I know what I'm doing now. At the front of the tender was a little piece of plastic. I think it's part of the, the housing where the drawbar from the loco connects to the tender. But removing that reveals two little holes ideally placed for some wires to go through without fouling on the wheels. And with the wires resoldered, you can see how it's all coming together quite nicely. There's just enough wire. That piece of plastic I removed does serve a purpose though, but I can't press it back in where it was before because I've used those holes. So I cut that part off and glued the rest back in place. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I I'm not using the white and yellow wires, so I've put some electric tape over those to insulate them, and then popped it onto my programming track. JMRI recognised the chip immediately, and it all looked good. Right, time to get it back onto the track and see what happens. It moves! Hurrah! <laughs> the keeper plate is only held on by one screw at the moment, so it's a little bit loose, and I think that's causing alignment problems with the pickups, but hopefully that'll sort itself out once the body's on. So here she is, in all her resplendent glory. The wires between the engine and the tender are hardly visible, which is good news. You have to look really hard to see them. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Mm. 
now, let's see how she runs. Beautifully, I think, is the answer. The motor is a little noisy, but I haven't had a chance to run it in yet, so hopefully that will quieten down after a while. But it seems smooth, and the chip is behaving perfectly. Uh, please excuse my temporary hillside, I'll be working on that in a future video. negotiated all those points and curves first time with no drama, which is encouraging. For a decades old model, this is superb. I'll leave you with a few running shots, because I just couldn't resist the temptation to have a play. I'm really pleased with the DCC install on this Loco. It took a bit of effort, but it was all done in one evening and despite the permanent modifications I had to make, it turned out pretty tidy. I'm really impressed with the Trainomatic decoder too, it seems really good. So I definitely recommend those if you're in the market. I'm sure you'll see plenty more of this loco in future videos. Speaking of which, there's plenty more on its way, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any updates. You'll also find information in the description below about how you can support me, and I'd really appreciate your thoughts and comments. Well, that's all from me for this video. Bye for now.